Hello and welcome. My name is Niall McGuire. I'm a first year PhD student at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow and today I'll be presenting my 2023 Akin paper submission on ensemble learning for mental workload classification. Mental workload can be defined as a cognitive resource required by a subject while enga engaging in a task. Prior research has shown that when subjects' cognitive load increases, the performance while undertaking a task may suffer significantly. In certain applications, this lowered performance may increase the potential risk of human error occurring and in some, some severe cases, potentially fatal accidents. Hence, a system capable of determining the workload level of a participant has a variety of impactful applications across various industries. Historically employed techniques to determine a subject's mental workload levels include subjective self-review questionnaires, such as the Subjective Workload Assessment Technique, SWOT, and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration's Task Load Index, NASA TLX. Although these techniques provide insight into the participant's workload, they are inherently subjective, meaning that one subject's perception of how they perform may be skewed compared to the objective performance. As well as this, questionnaires are often applied in a post hoc manner after the subject has completed the task, preventing real time gathering of mental workload metrics. To address these flaws, researchers have looked for uh, alternative methods of determining the workload levels of a participant. And in particular, brain activity has successfully indicated the subject's mental workload level. For mental workload level, brain features are often extracted using one of the following techniques MEG, fMRI, fNRIS, and EEG. EEG is commonly incorporated into mental workload research due to its ability to capture data in real time on the millisecond scale its portability and its unobtrusiveness. EEG has, uh, has been shown to represent information strongly correlated with the subject's mental workload level through the, ele the electrical activity captured from the brain, making it the ideal selection for this type of research. In preliminary mental workload related studies, physiological data is often used to train a variety of machine learning models to differentiate between the various workload levels that a subject may be experiencing. Although these studies produce results to satisfy their research questions, most researchers overlook the use of optimization uh, for more accurate and robust results. Supposing that a mental workload classifier system uh, was to be put into practice, this system would need to be reliable and robust in determining the workload levels of a subject. To produce these results, ensemble learning can be introduced. For this study, we make use of two common ensemble learning techniques and compare them against each other. Bagging, also known as bootstrap aggregating, has two main components. Firstly, bootstrapping is where the training set is randomly resampled into subsets that can contain multiple instances of the same data point for each learning within the, within the ensemble. These subsets are then assigned to and used to train individual models. With the idea being that since each model has been trained on its, ra its own random subset of the data, the ensemble can better generalize for unseen data. Secondly, aggregating is when the ensemble is presented with a testing data set. It averages the class uh, prediction across each learner and selects the class with the highest number of votes. On the other hand, stacking, also known as stack generalization, begins splitting the trained uh, data into two subsets, one used to train each learner and one used to test each of the learners to obtain their predictions. These predictions are then used to train a meta learner. The idea behind this is to weigh the predictive outputs from each model, as some learners may generalize or overfit the data uh, more than others. The final test set would then be supplied to each of the, uh, to the ensemble, where each learner's predictions would be passed to the meta learner to weigh the significance of each learner's outputs and select the most appropriate class. As such, this study aims to investigate three main research questions. Firstly, can ensemble learning techniques improve upon the performance of mental workload classification over that of single learner models? Secondly, how do different ensemble learning strategies compare against each other? And lastly, what are the effects of different ensemble compositions on performance? For this study, we utilise the open source simultaneous task EEG workload dataset, also known as STU. The STU dataset creates a multitasking mental workload environment using the single session simultaneous capacity SIMCAT experiment setup. The dataset contains the EEG data recorded from 45 subjects using a 14 electrode system 
sampled at 128 Hz. The data was recorded from each subject during the two experimental conditions, resting and testing. In the resting state, the participants sat in the chair and performed no task for three minutes. In the testing section, the subjects took part in the SIMCAP test experiment, which lasted a total of three minutes as well. After each experiment, the subjects were asked to rate the per uh, perceived performance on a, scale, on a nine point scale from one to nine. From this scale, the range one to three can be considered low workload, four to six is moderate workload, and seven to nine is high workload. During EEG recording, it's commonplace for electrical activities caused by the individual's actions to affect the data, causing artifacts to form within it. These unwanted signal fragments can negatively impact the measurement and skew the results. Literature has been sh uh, shown that most human brain activity sits within a specific range. This range varies from work to work, but primarily it sits between the range of 0.5 to 40 Hz. For pre-processing, we marked bad channels previously indicated by the dataset creator and removed them from our dataset. Then we applied a bandpass filter between the ranges of 0.5 to 40 Hz, so that anything beyond these ranges can be considered noise. To capture significant characteristics of the EEG data, we generated a set of features from the processed dataset. Firstly, morphological features. These are the number of peaks, the average nonlinear energy, and the curve length were all extracted. Each of these was calculated at specific, four specific frequency bands. Theta, which is 4 to 8 hertz, alpha, which is 8 to 13 hertz, beta, which is 13 to 25 hertz, and low gamma, which is 25 to 40 hertz. We then extracted statistical features, this being skewness, mean, and kurtosis. The nonlinear features as well, these being approximate entropy and the Hurst exponent. In prior works that aim to classify mental workload from subjects, deep learning models have adequately classified EEG data. As such, we make use of the following models within our research, GRU, BGRU, LSTM, and BLSTM. The architecture uh, of each of the models is shown in the table, where G, BG, L, and BL, and D correspond to the GRU, the BGRU, the LSTM, the BLSTM, and the dense layer, respectively. We also have the unit count starting at 128 for the first layer, moving down to 64, lastly to 40 for some of the models, in some cases 32, and then a dense layer of either 32 or 16, depending on the model. All models have a final layer, which is a dense layer that has three units. This corresponds to each of the workload levels that we're trying to predict, low, medium, and high. To address each of the research questions that we propose in this study, we create specific experiment scenarios. Firstly, we use four single learner baseline models to compose our ensembles, these being the GRU, the LSTM, the BGRU, and BLSTM. This helps to investigate specifically research question one, where we can compare the performance of our ensemble models to each of the baselines to see if there's an improvement in the prediction of each of the models. Secondly, we use two ensemble techniques, these being bagging and stacking, and each of these will be compared against each other, helping to address research question two. To begin, each of these ensemble strategies has five variations where they're composed of different single learner models. As we mentioned, the four, uh, four GRU learners, four LSTM learners, four BGRU learners, and four BLSTM learners. And lastly, a mixed model containing one of each of the models. Again, these being GRU, LSTM, BGRU, and BLSTM. And this helps to investigate research question three, where we look into the composition of specific ensembles. This means in total that we have 10 separate ensemble models for training and evaluation. For our training strategy, we select the time series cross-validation method, wherein we have an expanding window for each of the folds. 70% of the fold is used for training the models, 10% is used for validating the models, and lastly, 20% is used for testing the models to produce our final accuracy results. Here we have the results for experiment scenario one. The plot that you see on screen for the y-axis is the accuracy of each of the models, and for the x-axis we have each of the specific models themselves. Within our graphs we have three subplots. We have the baseline models, the bagging ensemble models, and the stacking ensemble models. 
These are box plots that contain the variance of each of the model's predictions during the time series cross-validation training method. And the red triangle indicates the mean of each of their performances. Firstly, looking at if the ensembles help to improve across the baseline models, we can see that bagging obtains a performance increase of 3.7%. And for stacking, we see a 4.2% increase on average across all models. When looking at the biggest difference between the baseline and ensemble models, we can see that the LSTM for the stacking ensemble obtains this. It obtains a score of 93.5%, which is an increase of 5.6% in performance over its baseline model. When comparing the two ensemble strategies against each other, we can see that the stacking model on average has an increased performance of 0.7%. When looking at the actual highest performers of each of the ensemble varieties, we see that the BLSTM comes out on top for both, both techniques. With the bagging ensemble BLSTM obtaining 96% accuracy and the stacking ensemble BLSTM obtaining 96.2% accuracy. Lastly, when looking at the mixed composition uh, ensemble model for both strategies, we can see that in general, that they outperform the GRU and the LSTM model. Whereas for the bagging ensemble variety, it does not outperform the BGRU, whereas for the stacking ensemble mixed model, it does outperform the BGRU. However, in both cases, they are unable to outperform their B, uh, BLSTM uh, counterpart. To further investigate research question three, we increase the number of individual learners in each ensemble from four learners to six to eight, and to lastly, 10 learners. This was done to assess how many learners can be added to an ensemble before the performance stagnates, allowing us to determine the optimal number of learners to compose an ensemble network. The results that you can see on screen is a table with each of the model's individual scores and their associated member count. The table on the left being for the bagging ensembles and the table on the right being for the stacking ensembles. When looking at the results for the bagging ensemble, we can see that for the GRU, BGRU, LSTM and BLSTM, as the member count increases from 6 to 8 to 10, there is no significant increase in the performance of the models. The same can be said for the stacking ensembles, where there is some slight variety in the increase in, uh, of the accuracy, however, it's not significant enough to derive any meaning from. So, in conclusion, this study, we explored the viability of ensemble learning uh, models to provide an, uh, improved performance over single learner models when applied to the STU mental workload data set. We examined how different ensemble learners' learning techniques, such as bagging and stacking, compare in performance and explored how ensemble composition affects the performance. Our findings demonstrated a substantial improvement of all the ensemble networks over their, their individual learner counterparts. With, a ba with bagging and stacking ensemble consisting of four learners, uh, on average increasing in accuracy by 3.7% and 4.2% respectively, whilst reducing the variation in the prediction output. That concludes our presentation and we hope that you found it informative. Thank you for watching.